All right, everyone. So now we're going to focus on very important use case. One of the must know use cases for that aggregations is doing running total and rolling total. These two concepts are very important for data analysis and doing reporting that you must know. The key use case for those two concepts is to do tracking. For example, we can go and track the current total sales with the target sales in our business and as well it's great in order to do historical analysis for the trends. Okay, so now the question is what is running and rolling total? They are basically very similar. They're going to go and aggregate a sequence of members and the aggregation going to get updated each time we add a new member to the sequence. A sequence could be like a time sequence. That's why we call this type and analyzes over time. So now we still have the question, what is the difference between the running and the rolling totals? The running total can go and aggregate everything from the beginning until the current data point without dropping off any old data. Where on the other hand, in the rolling total, it's going to go and focus on a specific time window like the last 30 days or the last two months. And each time we add a new member or a new data point to the window, we will be dropping off the oldest data point in the window. And with this, we're going to get the effect of rolling or let's say shifting window. Okay, I totally understand if this might be complicated. Now let's go and have very simple example in order to understand this concept and as well how we can solve it using SQL. All right, guys, so now we have very simple example. We have the months and sales and we have it twice because I want to show you side by side how SQL works with the running total and the rolling total. So now what is the task on the left side? We want to find the running total of sales for each month. And on the right side, we would like to find three month rolling total of the sales for each month. So they sound very similar, but on the right side, we have only fixed window. So now how we can solve this using SQL on the left side, we can use sum of sales. So we want to go and aggregate all the sales using the sum function. And the definition for the window going to be like this order by month. And of course, you can go and do anything like you can have here an average. And if you use an average with order by, you will get the running average or the running max or the running count and so on. So that means always if you go and mix an aggregate function together with an order by, you will generate an effect of running total. Now on the right side, we're going to have the same stuff. So we can have an aggregate function together with order by. So sum of sales, order by month. So far, we have everything like the left side, right? But now you might ask, why is SQL going to go and generate this effect, the running total? We didn't here specify like crazy stuff, right? It's all about the definition of the frame clause. So now do you remember if you use an order by and you don't specify a frame clause, you will get like hidden or let's say default frame clause and it's going to look like this rows between unbounded preceding and current row. And what was the definition of the running total? It's going to go and aggregate all the data from the very first beginning well, the unbounded proceeding until the current position, the current row, without dropping off any old members. So that means that the definition of the running total going to be the exact definition of the default frame clause. That's why SQL going to go and generate the effect of the running total. Now let's go to the right side, the rolling total. Here again, we have the same stuff, right? We're going to go and aggregate the data using the sum function and we're going to go and sort the data order by month. So with that, we are as well generating the effect of running total. So each time you use order by with aggregate function. So now in the running total, we want always to specify a frame. So here in this example, three months. So that means if we are getting a new month, we don't want to include the latest months. We want always to be fixed window. Now, in order to have this fixed window effect, we have to go and redefine the frame clause. Because if you leave it as a default, like the running total, the frame gonna keep extending. You will see this effect in the example. So now we define it like this, rows between two preceding and current row. So the total number of rows gonna be included in each window, gonna be maximum of three months. So now I know you might saying, Para, what you are talking about? You didn't get anything. It's totally normal. You will understand it only with an example. So in order to do this, let's start with the left side. So first, SQL going to go and sort the data. So everything is sorted from the smallest month until the highest one. So from January until July, everything is good. And now SQL going to go and start working with the frame. So the frame says unbounded proceeding. So this is going to be static. It's going to be always pointing to January. This is the unbounded proceeding, the first row in the data set. And now, of course, we are starting from top to bottom. The current row is going to be pointing as well to January. So the frame is going to look like this. It's going to be only one row. And the total sale of this row is going to be 20. So 
that's why we're gonna have it the output 20. So now let's move to the right side. The current row gonna be as well January. And what is it? The two preceding? We don't have it yet, so it's gonna be pointing maybe somewhere here before the table. So again, what is the frame? It's gonna be as well one row. So in the output, we will get exactly the same result. 20. So, so far there is no differences between the running total and the rolling total. But let's keep going. Now we're gonna go to the next row over here. So what can happen to our frame? It's gonna go and extend, right? So we're gonna have now two months in this frame. And what is the total sales over here? It's gonna be 30. So we added a new member. You can calculate it like this. Either go and calculate all the sales within the frame or you can go and say this is the previous aggregated value plus the new member. So the previous one was 20, the new member is 10, we will get 30. Both of them is correct. So now let's move to the right side. What's gonna happen? We're gonna be as well at February. The two proceeding is still like pointing somewhere outside. And here the window gonna go and extend like this. We have two months and the same aggregation can happen. So we have 30. So, so far, nothing crazy, right? Let's go to the next month, March. The frame gonna be extended. So we have now three months. And the aggregation gonna be either here, 60 or 30 plus 30. We will get the running total of 60. And now on the right side, what's gonna happen? We're gonna point as well to March. And this time, the two proceeding gonna be pointing to January. And this is the first time we are getting the whole fixed frame, right? So we have here three masses in this frame. So what is the total of that? It's gonna be 60. Okay, so now you say, okay, we're still getting the same results. So there's no difference. I'm gonna say, wait for it. It's gonna be the next one. So as we go to April, the effect here is that the frame gonna get extended to four months because always we start from the first month until the current month without dropping any member outside. So what is the total of this? It's gonna be 65, sorry, like this. So now on the right side, what's gonna happen? We're gonna go and add a new member, the April, but we are at the maximum size of the window. We have only three. And that's because the two proceeding gonna shift as well down over here. So the boundary gonna be from February until April. And with that, we are dropping off January. And now you're gonna see the effect. It is sliding, it is rolling or shifting from top to bottom. And that's because the boundaries as well shifting. So you can see now the effect of the rolling total. The newest member gonna be added, the oldest member gonna be out. We are allowed only to have three masses. So what is the total of this? It's gonna be 45. So this time so we are not aggregating this value, the 60 together with the five, we are aggregating the values within the window. So now let's keep going. Now we are at June. What can happen on the left side? The frame gonna get bigger. And with that, we will get the result of 135. So the frame is getting really bigger, but on the right side, it's gonna have a fixed frame. So we are just sliding, shifting and rolling. So with that, we are adding new member. Another member is leaving, the oldest one. And the total over here gonna be 105. And now we're gonna go to the last row. We will have everything for the running total. So the whole data set is gonna be aggregated. So this is the maximum what we're gonna get. It's gonna be around 175. But on the right side, it's just gonna keep shifting until we reach the last record. The window, the frame, gonna be as well shifting like this. So the total of this is gonna be 105. Okay guys, so you see, it's very simple. The running total is always considered everything from the starting position until the current row without dropping any member. The rolling total, it's always drop the oldest member in order to add something new and the window is keep shifting. So the running total is very great in order to do tracking, like for example, budget tracking, or we track, for example, the current total sales with a target or something like that. So always we are considering the whole data sets, but with the rolling total, we always do here focused analysis. We are always interested with the window of three months. So they might sound very similar, but they have completely different scope for analysis, but both of them are doing aggregate over time so they can help us to do analysis over time like checking whether our business is growing over time or declining so guys as you can see using very simple SQLs using the window functions we can do really great analysis on our data so those stuff are really fundamental of data analysis or doing reporting for our business so window functions are really powerful for data analytics 
Okay, so now we have the following task and it says, calculate the moving average of sales for each product over the time. So now we have here something called moving average. It is very similar to the running total. In the running total we used count and sum and so on, but here we're gonna go and use the function average and instead of calling it running average, we call it moving average. So let's go and solve the task. Let's start always by selecting the usual stuff. So let's get the order ID. Let's get the product ID. And I would say since it's over the time, I will get the order date as well. And the last one, the sales from our table, sales orders. So that's it. Let's go and execute it. So now we got our 10 orders with the products, order date and sales. Let's start building our window function step by step. So which function do we need? We need the average. This is the easiest one. It says moving average. So that's it. We need the sales. So it's going to be the average of sales. Let's go and define the window. So now do we have to divide the data, partition the data? Well, yes, it says for each product. That means we're going to go and use the partition by clause by the product ID. So now I would say that's it for the first step. So average by product. So let's go and execute it. So now if you check the result, you can see that we got our windows. So the first one for the product 101 and the total average of the sales going to be 35. So we have like aggregated one value for each window. The same thing for the next product and for the next and so on. So we don't have any progress over time or something like moving average over the time, right? We don't have this effect. We have just one average for each window. So now in order to have the effect of the moving average, it's going to be like the running total we have to use the aggregate function together with the order by so i'm just gonna make it in the new column i'm just gonna copy everything like here and now what we're gonna do order by and since it's over the time we're gonna go and use the order dates order dates and we're gonna have it as ascending because it's over time over time always like start with the earliest dates and dub with the latest dates so from the lowest to the highest, we're going to leave it like this. So let's call it moving average. So now let's go and execute it. And we got here an extra comma because of the copy paste. So let's execute it again. All right. So now let's check the results. Let's take the first window over here. And you can see we have on the moving average like a progress. So it starts with 10, 15, 14, 35. So there is like moving average. We don't have one solid number for the average. We have different values. So now how is SQL going to solve this? It's really simple. It's going to start row by row. So the first row, what is the average of 10? It's going to be 10. Then moving on to the next one, it's going to be 10 plus 20 divided by 2. You will get 15. So now moving to the third one, all those three values are going to be summarized divided by three you will get 40 and now to the last row in the window it's going to be summarizing all those four values divided by four and you will get 35 and this is exactly the same value in the previous column you have here the average by products we don't have order by you got as well 35 exactly like this last row and that's because we have the same calculation it is summarizing all those four values dividing it by four but now it's interesting the next value so as you can see the next value Value, it comes from another window so you see here we have 15 for the product 102 but the average is going to be as well 15 so SQL is not considering the old values from the other window so SQL gonna calculate each window separately so it's again here this is the first value of this window 15 the average 15 then the same stuff right so summarizing those values divided by two and so on and this we call in data analysis this last field over here, we call it a moving average and you can implement it very simply using an average function together with the order by. All right, let's move to the next task and it says calculate the moving average of sales for each product over time, including only the next order. So as you can see, the first part we have already done is right. We have the moving average and divided by partition by for the products. But here we have more specifications. It says including only the next order. That means we are talking about the current order and as well the next order. So here we have like a fixed frame or fixed window. So we don't need the whole average of the window. We need only maximum two orders in each calculation. So how are we gonna do that? We can have our custom frame clause inside our window function. So that means we cannot leave it as a default. We have to specify it. So let's go and do that. I will just copy the old definition of the window because we have the exact stuff. 
So we have the average sales over partition by product ID, order by date. So this is the first part. So now we would like to have this fixed window. So we're going to go now and define our frame close. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. It's going to be rows between. So we have now the boundaries of the frame. It says including the next order. So we're going to go and use the following. So the first boundary is going to be the current row. And since it's next order, so it's going to be one following. So that is our frame, including only the next order. And we have it like this, one following. Let's call it, yeah, rolling average. So that's it. Let's go and execute. So now let's go and check the result. You can see the moving average has completely different values as the rolling average. So let's go and understand why. We're going to do it row by row. Let's take the first row over here. So the sales here is 10 and the rolling average is 15. So why is that? Because in the calculation, we are considering the next value. So 10 plus 20 divided by 2, you will get 15. So that means the SQL defined the frame like this, those two rows for this calculation for the first row so now moving on to the second row is gonna include as well the third one right the next one but since the window is only two orders it's gonna go and drop the first row so the next frame gonna be like this and as you can see it's gonna be 20 plus 19 divided by 2 you will get 55 so now you can see the effect of the rolling average right so now for the next one gonna be exact same so we are at the third row it's gonna go and include the next one and we're gonna get the same value because 19 plus 20 divided by 2 you will get 55 now interesting to the last row in the window over here it will not go and consider the next value because it is outside of the window so it's gonna be 20 and it's gonna stay as well 20 so that's it. All right, guys. So with that, we have learned about the moving average, the rolling average, and those amazing concepts using the window function. All right. Now we can have a quick overview of the different use cases in the aggregate functions and how the definition of the window going to change the whole use case. So now the first use case is finding the overall total. And here, if you don't define anything in the window, if you leave it empty, what can happen? You are doing here overall analyzers. So you're going to go and aggregate the whole data sets and then provide this aggregation for each row so this is what happened if you leave it empty you don't define anything you are aggregating the whole data sets now moving to the next step we can do analysis called total pair groups so what we're gonna do we will add partition by to the definition of the window so by adding for example here partition by products what can happen the data gonna be splitted into two categories or two groups and the aggregation gonna be done for each window separately. This is of course a great analysis in order to go and compare different products like here the caps and gloves. So this is helpful in order to compare categories. So you can do this analysis total pair groups if you use the partition by. Now if you go and use the order by you're gonna land in the third use case. As we learned we will be doing running total. So as you can see in the output we are building a cumulative value for the sales and this is gonna help us in order to do progress over time analyzes in order to understand the performance of our business. And now moving on to the last use case, the final phase of the window function with the aggregation. Here you have the aggregate function together with the order by with customized fixed window. And of course, we can use it in order to help us building progress over time in specific fixed window. And of course, you can use those use cases. You will get the same effect if you use the other functions, not only the sum. You can use average, count, max, min, so all aggregate functions. So guys, as you can see, the window function in scale is very important in order to do data analytics. By just like changing the part of the window, you are generating a whole new use case for data analytics. If you like this video and you want me to create more content like this, I'm gonna really appreciate it if you support the channel by subscribing, liking, sharing, commenting, all those stuff gonna help the channel with the YouTube algorithm and as well my content gonna reach the others. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.